So I'm excited to have Sitengosi um, onto the show today. The reason why is that, guys, I'm predicting a legend. Okay, we're about to meet and really be in conversation with, imagine Tom Meesh, come Calvin Harris funk wave vibes, um, come South African flavor. That's literally what we're about to experience in South Africa. And um, he's, he's bringing this through in his music, in his vibe, in the way he dances. He'll tell us all about that. And not only that, I mean, he is the child of a legend. So he's, there's a lot of pressure on this boy. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure on him. Um, yeah, come with me, come with me. What do you think? Do you think you're gonna be a legend? Ooh, legend is a strong word. I like it though. It's a, ni <laughs> it's a nice word. I could. Come on, agree. give yourself a lot more credit. No, 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 no. We'll see. We'll see how it unfolds. But I'm, I'm working for now. Working, trying. I appreciate the acknowledgement. This is, this is a dream for me. Just being here, being in a makeup room, about to get interviewed, being mic'd up. The whole thing is super exciting. I'm, 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 I'm geeking a bit. Um, but yeah, no. Son of a legend, I think is true. Um, I have a lot to thank my dad for. I've learned a lot from him. A lot of dance moves as well. Um, and yeah, I'm also very excited to have a chat, to get to know Olwe Tua as well a little bit and to be introduced to the fans of the Sit Down podcast. By the way, fun fact, my aunt is like a second mom to him, he tells me. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. We have a lot of mutual family yes. connections. And yes, his, her aunt and my mom got married at the same time or besties <laughs> from the Eastern Cape. So yeah. So small world, small world. When I discovered his music on, on Instagram and I saw this particular, was it a wedding that you guys were at? And he was like dancing in this video. I was like, this kid is a legend. I have to have him on the show. So when you walk out the makeup room, he's not Sitengosi, he's Rudy Chama. So I'm going to introduce you guys to Rudy Chama. Chalmers. Rudy Chalmers. Oh, yes. So not too long ago, we were introduced to this high school kid who was, um, or is rather, the legendary Vuyong Buli son, Rudy Chalmers. And Chalmers is his dad's second name, by the way. I'm about to introduce you to this superstar who's about to pop off and is about to be a big legend from South Africa to the world. Let's go. Hip-hop is a musical genre that keeps growing and evolving across different parts of the world, from highlighting issues of politics, social conflict, and the life of hustling amongst other subject matters. We've def definitely seen a shift in the creative execution of the genre and what it expresses and the influences on today's generation of hip-hop artists. As a fan of hip-hop myself, I was intrigued by the sound of Rudy Chalmers, known to his family as Sitengo Simbuli. He is no stranger to the spotlight as the son of the late TV personality and news presenter Vuyong Buli and the media mogul Savit Dambuli. The young songwriter blends his music with hip hop and an alternative flavor and is sitting with us on the sit down lifestyle today. In follow We're going to be talking about him following in his father's footsteps and the pop and hip hop genre locally and internationally. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me all the way to I'm doing, I'm actually doing really well. I've been waiting to release music since about halfway through lockdown. And the releasing process has finally begun now. I've got two singles out and the reception has been unbelievable. So I kind of feel like I'm living the dream at the moment. Just being able to create and release and, you know, have, have positive feedback. So I want to walk, like, take a step back. Where does Rudy and where does Chalmers come from? So Rudy is just kind of a fun, playful name that I enjoyed. And Chalmers is my dad's middle name. So it's, it's the middle name that he was, it was actually given to him as his first name. So his name is Chalmers Vuyombuli. 
but then his professional career, he decided to go with Vuyo as, as his first name. So I thought, when I started thinking to myself, I want to take music seriously, um, I felt as though a stage name was a, an opportunity to have a persona and have a self as well, you know? So kind of detach the, the, the musician part of me from the other parts of me in certain moments when I needed to. So I thought about a stage name and I liked Rudy and I said, listen, an homage to my father as well, Rudy Chalmers, I'm gonna run with it. People started calling me Rudy, people call me Chalmers, people call me Chalmer Boy now, which is like, all of it is, I, I just love it, you know, I love it, I love it. And since I've been releasing music, friends who, who usually call me Te, Si Te, they're like, my friends were, have been saying to me, ah, we've been calling you Rudy a lot lately. Yeah, <laughs> because it's, I'm, are you finding that the stage persona and the person's also becoming you? It, it, it is, it is. It's all, it's, all, it's all kind of one because of, it, it's just music just feels like the right thing for me. Like you're, you're coming into your own. Essentially. I mean, you did a, a, an interview, um, you were still in high school, I don't know if you remember it, after the passing of your dad, where they asked you, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to become? Where do you see yourself going? Um, and you said, well, you, you kind of don't know. I mean, I, look how far you've come now. How do you feel that, um, and it's very rare, once again, like when you're in high school, there's a lot, when you get asked these questions, a lot of people say, I want to be a doctor, or I want to be a lawyer, or I want to study this. But you said, I don't know, I'll see. Huh? <laughs> I, think, I think the I don't know, I'll see came from deep down wanting to say that I have a passion for music. But like, you know, saying I want to be a musician and saying I want to be a lawyer, a 14 year old, the reception is, you know, it's different. If a, if a 14 year old says to you, I want to be a doctor, you know, the immediate response is ah, encouragement, you know, you're going to do it, you're going to make it. I want to be a musician. It's kind of like, okay, well, I mean, yeah, like uh, that's an interesting hobby, but like, you know, can you make it into a career? So I think there was a little bit of that fear and also a little bit of like trying to let myself really see if music was for me and if music was something that I was going to pursue. And I think I've, I've, I've gotten to that stage. So you started writing music at the age of eight and you started being more active and making your music and kind of just coming out with like more music at the age of 14. Um, but you're studying philosophy and politics. How, I mean, how did you come to that music and discovering your musicality to deciding that you wanted to actually go into politics and philosophy as so, a study? So discovering my musicality at about seven, eight years old came from visiting my grandparents in Pimville, Ubaba no Koko. So my older cousin, Zolani, he stayed there at their house. So every Sunday after church, we'd go there and me and him would just sit in his room and he'd show me all these lyrics that he'd written. And he'd play beats and he'd freestyle to me and he'd, and he'd show me these raps. And he was about, he's, I'd say eight years older than me. So he was about 16 at that stage, you know, and he was, he was like the coolest person in the world <laughs> to me. So I was like, okay, this is what Zolani's doing. This is what you need to be doing. So I started doing it, I started doing it. And me and him, it, it used to just be, you know, a fun hobby and something that we just could lose ourselves in. We could lose ourselves in for hours. So I always just had that in me. I always just had like, when I was bored, when I was maybe even feeling a bit low, I would just go to my room, find an instrumental, find a, whether it was like a beat from a musician that I liked or on YouTube, other instrumentals. I would just go there and write some, just write some thoughts down, you know, and let them loose. And it was, it was, just, it was just a moment for me. It, it, I kept that for myself. And I was telling you earlier off screen, my sister had a best friend who almost became like an older brother to me, who went to the same high school as me. And um, so when I entered high school, we used to talk about music all the time. Who's your favorite rapper? You know, who's running the rap game? Talk about Forrester's Drive. You know, what did Drake just release? So my sister went into my room and took a video of me freestyling, me doing my, you know, just in my own bubble. And she sent it to him. And then he sent me a message. His name is Malcolm. He sent me a message. He was like, my guy, if this is you freestyling, take this seriously. And, and it, you know, it's one of those moments in life where you just needed one person to say, maybe this should be a serious thing for you to be like, maybe this should be a serious thing, you know? From that point, I started trying to learn how to produce beats. I went on SoundCloud, I put music out. I put out a song in grade nine. That when I was four, just before I turned 15, I put out 
two songs in grade 10 and a song in grade 11. And then, so fr from this little hobby of mine, and, and, and me and my mom, we share a wall. So my room is right behind her. So obviously she can hear this, you know? So one of her friends built a little recording studio in his house. And so one day she came into my room, she said, get dressed, we're going. So in the car, she was like, okay, you've been making noise about wanting to record and you do this music thing. Okay, here's a studio, you're gonna do this thing. And that's where I met a, a guy by the name of Tembi Sotwala. This was in, I was in grade 10 at this point. And he has turned out to be like a mentor, producer kind of figure for me because when I met him, it was another kind of propelling moment because I met him and Uncle Tommy, the guy who owned the studio, and another guy, Mish. And when I rapped for them, they were like, okay, this guy, is, this kid needs to keep it's rapping. Yeah. He needs to keep coming back here yeah? and he needs to keep rapping and we're gonna make music with him. So from then on, I've kind of just been trying to hone it and hone it and hone it and hone it. And I've spent countless hours with Ste, even Ste, my mom, my sister, just engaging with like, okay, if music is the dream, how are we gonna do it the best that we can? How are we gonna make sure that it's, it's what we want the world to hear from us? Um, so I've been, I've been recording with Ste since grade 10 and the, the singles that I've released now, I've recorded with Ste. That, that studio that we used to go to, um, is a, it, it, it doesn't exist anymore, but we recorded in a small little house in Daviton these last few singles with a, a guy by the name of Smoo and he was so welcoming and I, I've just been, I feel like I've been lucky because I've been able to run into people that have just given me encouragement in moments where I felt like I've needed it and just little like messages of affirmations and, and like we believe in you, kid. You, you, you have something that people... I mean, people... you have something. Yeah. <laughs> That's no doubt. Can you tell us about, like, so growing up, you, you, discover, this, you discover your love for music in your grandmother and grandfather's house in, 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 David, in Soweto, in Pimville, in Soweto. Soweto. Um, but what was the music like at home? What were your parents listening to? What were you guys vibing to at home? I, I, you know, I love this question because I always, my favorite artists, when they get asked questions like this, the answers are always, you know, <laughs> out of this world. So my mom, big, massive Brenda Fassi fan, you know, like original rock star Brenda Fassi. My dad's taste in music was also all over the place. He, I remember the day that Luciano Pavarotti passed away, he was, almost, he was heartbroken. He, he was like, oh, and that's when I was like, dad, who is this person? <laughs> that you, like, I was seven, I'm like, dad, who is this person like, that you're so like sad about? In Princess Diana exactly. Exa I was like, Dad, did you know him? Like, you know, no, it's Pavarotti, the opera singer. So I'm like, oh wow, my dad is so sad about a guy that he didn't even know. So he used to blast Pavarotti. There's um, an opera band called the Ten Tenors. They're, so I think they, they're inspired by the three tenors that Pavarotti was a part of. And so they had an album that came out in about 2009 and they did a tour of South Africa and they were on Morning Live as well. So they used to sing opera, classical opera in Italian, um, some songs in English. So when they came, we, our family, we were like the biggest Ten Tenor fans ever. Me and my sister even missed our first two lessons of school to go to the Morning Live studio, to stand backstage and look at the Ten Tenors. And then when the Ten Tenors left, we all as a family got in the car and drove behind their van just to like, you know, see where they were going. And then that night we went to their concert so I was lucky. I was incredibly lucky that my parents just kept blasting music and they played music that they loved. Um, my uncle even, he told me a story that I didn't even remember. This is my mom's brother. So he used to live with us and he used to fetch me from school every day, me and my sister, and drop us off at school. So in preschool, he, he told a story of the day of show and tell. I went with a speaker and a microphone and I was Mendoza. And I was like, I mean, I, I mean, it was written in the even, stars. I didn't even remember that that happened. It was happened. written in the stars. And, and, and Mendoza was also huge for me, massive. I, I loved Mendoza, I loved Brown Dash, I, even, I loved Bricks, I loved all, all that kind of Kasi, Tzoti Tal kind of music. I loved it as well. That kind of funk, because that also has funky elements to it. And Casper in your vest has even been in, inspired by that kind of Pansula, you know, double HP vibe. So. Yeah, I, I listened to so much music growing up. Yes. And I mean, you kind of, 
it's, it was written in the stars that you would kind of follow some, something that your dad would do in the spotlight somehow, somewhere. Um, and you've kind of taken on this legendary factor about you in crafting your own path. How then has also the studying the philosophy and the politics influenced the writing of the music? Because your dad was a very smart man in his art in front of the camera. Yes, absolutely. So you kind of, your, your lyrics as well are thought through. It's not, you know, you're spanky, you're fun, you're comedic, you're lyrical, but it's, it's, it's this thought behind it. No, I, I think you've put it beautifully. My dad was a very, very smart man and he, there's, we have, books upon books, shelves upon shelves of books that he used to engage with before, before radio shows, before going on Morning Live. And I think that I was going to answer to the question of how, how have I kind of fused studying politics and philosophy and being in a humanities degree that's, you know, essay upon essay upon essay and being in music. I think it's actually, it's benefited my music because I've had to find a voice in writing even in my essays, and I think writing music the way that I do has benefited my essay writing in the same way that you know, essay writing has benefited my music because it's just about honing that voice. And it's a, writing is a skill, like, you know, like anything, and, and it has to be intentional. And also, when I used to record with Tembiso and my mom and my mom's friend, you know, I was recording with like parents. They were 35, 40 years old. So like some of the lyrics that I had as a, as a 15, 16 year old kid, I was like, I, you can't be saying these. I think you need to go back to the drawing board and you need to revisit what you're saying because you're in the studio in front of your mom here. Yeah. So like, let's make sure that you're saying proper things. And that's also, I feel like a huge blessing in disguise because now writing like that comes naturally. You know, I don't have to pay attention to writing a certain way. It's just the way that I've grown into writing. And I don't think I would have chosen to do it another way. I think. Going to university has helped me in an immense amount of ways. And obviously being a young South African boy, understanding that I have the opportunity to even be at a tertiary institution is a blessing. And I have to take that and you know, run with it. And I've been able to meet so many amazing creative people that have helped me along with my journey as well. So yeah, being in the position where I can say I'm a student and a musician, soon to be only a musician. Yes. Is, <laughs> oh, we hope so. Yes. We hope so. Is, <laughs> because your mom's going to say yes first. Yes, my mom has to say yes first. But um, And I've been mean, talking about your mom. She's been very pivotal in, in your journey. She's been very critical in, the, in your journey of growth. We spoke earlier about how, I mean, this is one of the very key people in the startup of the radio station YFM, you know? We, a lot of young people came from Y and Y Academy and are pretty big deals right now in the radio and music world. She had, a, she had the ear for the music. How much pressure does that put on you? I think the only time it, I feel the pressure of it is when I speak with her. Is <laughs> <laughs> when we actually engage. Yes. That because she's like, and I, I said it, I, I was lucky enough to have a concert in Cape Town uh, two weeks ago. And um, one, of, one of the songs that I sang, I dedicated it to her and I said it in my little speech before I performed, was that she's the type of mother that anything you show her, she'll say, okay, but this little bit can be better, you know? Not in a, in, in a way that she always wants her kids to be the best that they can be, you know? So every, every song I played her, she was like, good, good, revisit this. Revisit this, try again here, try again here, try again here. So, and, and, she, and sometimes we even knocked heads. And I've been like, mom, like, you know, this is my music. Like, I'm the one making it. Can you just smile and just say that you like it? And she said, no, I'm, I'm gonna- I'll let you be mediocre. Yeah, you have to be the best that you well, can. Well, she's not mediocre. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I think, I think the space that she came from and the space that my dad came from, like, you know, your parents are your biggest influences. I, I've learned so much from my mom and learned so much from my dad and I just, I just want to make them proud and I just, I just want to create music and, and, and art that they would appreciate. My dad was the biggest lover of music. Even as in, into his old, later ages, he used to just walk around the house singing constantly. <laughs> And I mean, you talk about um, the robes and the, and the dance moves being yes. inspired by him. Yes, yes. How so? Because you're saying he, he used to walk around the house dancing. Was He's, this in robes and the dance moves? So those, the two robes that are in my music video that me yes. and my, my stylist who is in the video with me wear, 
they belong to him. So that was that was just his 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 gassy flavor, you know. He's a he's a guy from Zone Five. He's he's got the Pantula swag, you know. So he was he that, that was just who he was. He didn't used to he, he used to dance only on on special occasions because he used to wear formal shoes every day, obviously with his suits. And those shoes have like the grip on them isn't the best, so you can slide around and you know you can two step quite well. And he used to know that whenever he two stepped, I loved it. You know, he would dazzle me with his dance moves. So he would keep them secret. He would he would do them once or twice in the kitchen, and just as I saw, he'd stop. And I'd be like, Dad, please dance again, dance again, dance again. And he would just say, No, 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 I've done I've danced another time. So he always had those undercover dance moves that I was just like. So you took those and they became you because you do them on almost all your music yeah. and there's a particular video on Instagram we was it was a birthday party yes yes my aunt's 50th birthday yes yeah. and you just popped off you just popped yeah. off it was such a beautiful moment what are some of the fondest memories besides the dancing that you cherish about that and that have kind of you know made you the confident young man that you are because not only do you make incredible music but it's the confidence that we can feel it's the it's the charisma that we can feel Mm. No, I, I do. There is even a, um, a line in one of my songs where I say, maybe, maybe I got my charisma from my old man. Because being around him all the time and like he, he, just, he just oozed like self-assurance. And I think both of my parents have that. They are just, they just grounded in themselves. And so that's, that's what they try to push onto me and my sister. Is that grounded in yourself and grounded in your base, in your family, you know, when, if your foundation is strong, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm lucky yeah. to say that I have a strong foundation, a strong base, like even just the fact that I, my family home is still the house that I grew up in. I've only lived in one house my life. So I still have the memories of me being two years old in the same garden that we shot the music video in, you know? So, so I think just seeing my parents have that self-assuredness and them saying that, listen, you guys, you, you guys are, are reflections of us and you, you are, you are strong, you are smart, you are, you are beautiful. Our parents used to give us many, many affirmations. They used to look at us and, and I even remember conversations like my dad used to hug me and this was, this was just before he started um, running and doing comrades. So he was, a, he was a bit, he had a bit of extra fluff. So, and you know, when you're a child- you put it. He had a bit of extra fluff. A bit of extra fluff. And you know, when you're a child, you just like, children can be mean. Mm -hmm. So he would hug me and say, every day he'd hug me and say, I love you, do you know that? And I'd be like, Dad, I know you love me. Like, it's fine. And I would hug him back and be like, yes, you're getting, you're getting, a, bit, you're getting a bit fluffy here, eh? And he's, he's busy trying to tell his son that he loves him. Oh. So that was the kind of dad I had. Yeah. The kind of dad who would like kiss you on the cheek and kiss you on the forehead. My mom would tell him to stop kissing me. <laughs> and, and he was like, no, why would I stop kissing my yeah. son? You know? And those so, are just memories that you still hold on to. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, it's as though he lives through you. Mm and you, you kind of carry on his memory. Um, and you, you, you know it in, in the most unarrogant, but still self-assured way, and it's so beautiful. I mean, the hip hop genre is evolving. The mm. pop genres are everywhere, but you found a way to merge and so beautifully bring together hip hop, pop, and an alternative sound to your music. What were you gunning for? I mean, I've said to you, it feels like I'm listening to Tom Mish come Calvin Harris's funk wave, all in one piece of music, but with like this, you know, this flavor that is nostalgic, but still unfamiliar. Sure. Um, so what I was gunning for, I think, was just to, just to reflect kind of the happiness that I try and live my life with, mm. you know? And I think if, if my music can share a little bit of joy and, you know, put a skip in somebody else's step, that's, that's kind of the goal for me. Yeah. So that's, that's the aim that I go for with all of my music. But with my, my latest single, On My Way, when I heard that instrumental, it was kind of, I realized, and I've been experimenting with singing and, and it kind of a jazzy, playful, funky voice mm. um, away from my lyricism and away from the rapping. And when I heard that instrumental, I was, I was scared to make it because <laughs> I've, I've actually written a, a, a full mixtape of mm. 10 songs that should be coming out in the next two weeks. Whoop, whoop. So, <laughs> yes, exactly. It's called Fears and Fantasies. Nice. So that was the last song that I wrote on that mixtape. 
because I heard the instrumental and I was like, okay, this is going to require me to experiment mm. and I'm nervous. So I kept, I, I would listen to it and then say, okay, no, we, I'm not going to make this song. Listen, but then it would pull me back. The instrumental mm. kept pulling me back and pulling me back. And then I was like, listen, my guy, just have fun, you know, yeah. just have Use fun and just, just, just pour <laughs> some joy into the music and, and just try and share it with the people. So I think going into university is when I started listening to a lot of alternative music. In high school, I was listening to strictly hip hop. Okay. J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, trying to study even the greats, listening to Tupac, Biggie, Rakim. I was strictly on lyricism because I was like, listen, I'm a rapper, I need to study rappers. Mm. There's, there's actually a Kanye interview that, um, that he, he had on Ellen that, I, that I, I, I remember quite fondly where he says that to be great, you should aim to study greatness. Mm. So when I was in grade nine, I was kind of just studying people that were great in my field, you know, yes. that were great in the window of, of mm. lyricism. Yes. And as I've gotten older, I've tried to take inspiration and take guidance and motivation from people that are great in all kinds of fields. Like, like now you're kind of broadening the, yes. the approach of what greatness is exactly. beyond just the genre of hip-hop. Exactly. And I, ex exactly. I feel like hip-hop has given me so much. Hip-hop has taught me so much about honesty, mm -hmm. about, you know, being who you are, being unapologetic, you know, speaking the truth on matters, and also just having a good time, yeah. you know, because that's what hip-hop is. <laughs> hip-hop is honest, it's true, it's raw, but it's mm -hmm. a great time. You know? Do you feel like you have to sometimes overcome these generational preconceived ideas of what your music needs to sound like as you're recording or as people are listening to the music or feedback that you get? Do I you feel I, any pressure? I, I feel like I, I've been able to not try and listen to how other people feel like my music should be. You okay. know? Because for a long, long time, I was having a conversation with myself about, okay, how should your music be? Mm. So now I'm... Um, I think I'm happy enough with how my music is mm. and how it's coming out and how I'm finding influence and bringing it into what I'm already making yes. that um, I, don't, I don't really feel the pressure to make music a certain way, yeah. except for the way that I want to, really. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I was, I've been listening to um, some of the music and also watching a few videos on, on Instagram. And there's also a jazzy vibe that you bring into the music. Your dad had, you know, listened to the Ten Tens, um, the t oh, sorry, the Ten Teners, but jazz, where does that come from? I think, so I've recently started learning instrument, instrumentals and um, I've started playing the guitar. So I, my first actual guitar lesson was in, I was eight years old when I started playing the guitar and I was being taught by a classical guitar teacher. So the way I wanted to play the guitar was re like really different to the way he was teaching me. Classical guitar is like with the foot pedal and you play it really almost like a cello. So I kind of distanced myself from guitar, but coming back to it and learning f from it, it's actually shown me that jazz is the basis of a lot of the music that people consume it, it today. Jazz like influences pop so much, it influences hip hop so much, and Jazz is, is so, it's so grounding and so like soulful and honest. It's, it, it feels like such a true art form that it's having it as part of your music, I feel like is only beneficial. I feel like most people try and aim for like a, well, most of the, the artists that I'm influenced by have that kind of jazzy undertone. Tom Mish, even like a British rapper called Loyal Connor, and even rappers like J. Cole, you know, have that kind of jazzy undertone and that jazzy feel. Mm. And do you, do you feel like it, it expresses, because I find that jazz can express any feeling mm -hmm. and it expresses that wittiness that you bring through sometimes, it expresses that happiness that you talk about mm. and it kind of encapsulates then and allows Tenkosi to meet Rudy Sharma. Yes, Chalmers. absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And like if you look at jazz icons, you can just, you, you just see how captivating they are. Yeah. You know, guys like George Benson who are like are on roller skates with, with a white blazer yes, on, yes. you know, with the guitar. <laughs> like you put on a the person, there's a personality yes, there. The, the jazz, it just, it, it, it's consuming mm. and it's, it's, it's beautiful and it's so expressive. The, the way you put it is beautiful. Jazz yeah. can really express anything. Sadness, honesty, you know, that playfulness, that yes. wittiness as well. So I, I'm, my appreciation for jazz is growing with my age mm. and with my 
learning of instruments and learning of musical theory. Mm. My appreciation for jazz is growing. So I do think that aiming for a jazzy flavor is something that I'm going to continue to do when I make music. And what are you hoping to highlight through your music? What are some of the key messages right now? Um, like you're saying, you, you're going to grow with your music. You want to grow with the flavor and the sound of your music. But what are you hoping to highlight in terms of messaging in, in your music? Um, where, where, like right now, where you are. What I'm hoping to highlight is, I guess, I, I would say where I am, the place I am in my life now. Because I feel like there's a lot of young people that are in a similar place. Mm. And I think that's why I've called the mixtape Fears and Fantasies. Mm. I, I know a lot of young people that have fantasies, that have dreams, have passions, that are like, you know, they're so strong in it. It almost feels like it's burning inside. And that there's that other side of it that's the fear, you know. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of people that the fear is holding them back. Mm. But I feel like the balance of the fear and the fantasy is, is super necessary because... Without the fear, you, you're never going to be nervous enough to, you know, keep yourself honest, you know. Mm. And without, without fantasizing, without dreaming, you're never going to keep yourself going, you know. Yeah. You, you have to have that thing to aspire to. And I remember before I put out two singles that I released last year, Steady and Let Go. Mm. Before I put those out, it was the end of first year. And all of my friends were really excited. They were like, oh, first year's done. <laughs> we have a three-month holiday. And I was like, geez. I've just finished a year of university. Mm -hmm. My degree has two years left. What's happening? You know, where am I going? I know that I love making music, but like I'm trying to look at what path I can take to become a musician mm -hmm. and it's so scary. Yeah. So I had this conversation with one of my friends and I literally explained that to him and I was like, bro, I'm feeling a bit lost. Like, you know, I don't know if this is the right thing to do. And he looked me in the eye and he said, listen, you know your dreams are the right dreams mm. if they scare the hell out of you. Your yeah. dreams are supposed to scare you. <laughs> and you're supposed to listen to that fear and know Lean that because you feel that fear mm. that you're doing the right thing. Absolutely. What's scaring you right now? What's scaring me right now is that that road that I thought was once foggy is clearing up. And everything that I've started to dream about, is, it's... It feels like it's coming true. I feel like I'm living my dreams right now. Yeah. So that, that's, that's what's <laughs> terrifying me. <laughs> Lean into it. <laughs> Lean into it. And I think as we close and as we wrap up, I want to ask you one last question, which is, I feel like it's like a bonus question because it's like, oh, that one last question. Um, where do you see yourself in a year? Mm. I see myself in a year having... released the mixtape and working on my first full studio album. Having, and my goals for the end of this year, I've been pretty clear about them with my friends, but they're also very COVID dependent, you know. Yeah. I would absolutely love to be on the stage at Rocking the Daisies. And mm. everything that I'm doing right now is aiming towards being on stage at Rocking the Daisies. And two weeks later is my birthday. Yeah. So that's when I turned 21. And my goal for my 21st birthday is to have a concert where I can invite 100, maybe 150 yeah. fans, friends, I'll be there. and music. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And close off the year playing Afropunk. So in an ideal world, I would love to end the year mm. with those three concerts under my belt and go into 2022 recording a full studio album. It is done. There we go. It is done. Ladies I said and it gentlemen. On the <laughs> No, it you said it. It's out there. said it on the sit down. It's out there. Yes. It's out there. It yes. is done. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of the Sit Down Lifestyle. We just interviewed Rudy Chalmers. Chalmers. I keep forgetting to say Rudy Chalmers. I mean, look, Chalmers boy, Chalmers. Chalmers. It's, <laughs> it's all the same thing. <laughs> and yeah, we will see him on stage at, at Rocking the Daisies and we'll see him at, on stage at Afropunk 2022. Is that, is, that, is that the goal? 2021 is the goal. End of this year. It is done. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, see you.